video evidence of the game being played on console, a fully realized team page, a brand new hero designed from the ground up. What's it going to take for people to understand that Team Soul Leaves Over Prime is going to be a force to be reckoned with? What's up everybody, I'm the Mangus, you are awesome, and today I'm talking about Over Prime. Specifically, I want to talk about how few people seem to be taking Soul Leaf seriously, and why the rest of the community needs to stop sleeping on this juggernaut. There certainly are reasons in the past why people, my, myself included, scoffed at this particular Paragon successor. The download and installation process was horrendous, the animations and sound effects were shit, and it all seemed to have a slightly homemade feel to it if you know what I mean. There are also reasons why you may not be interested in the game now. Overprime is set to be much faster than Paragon ever was, and they're deviating wildly from the game we knew. However, They've addressed and fixed the problems of their past, and it's this deviation from the Paragon path that can set this game apart so that it can at least coexist with the other Paragon successors. On top of all that, they've shown the game being played on console, which is a huge checkmark in the pros column for this game that completely offsets a lot of the cons. Way back in 2017, when I was doing community polls, MetaBuff's core would have over 90% of the community's attention, while Predecessor was barely an afterthought. Back then, I was clamoring for the community to take a step back and pay a bit more attention to Omeda Studios. Now look at where we are. Core isn't even a thought at all, while Predecessor is by far the strongest Paragon successor in the eyes of the majority. And rightfully so. The things that I predicted about both companies have come true. Omeda is on top for a reason. Predecessor is fantastic. Am I saying I'm clairvoyant? Fuck no. I'm saying that I pay far more attention to what's going on with all these games than the average person, and I can see the horizon a bit more clearly. What I see on the horizon now is Fault and Predecessor locked in a death battle while Overprime flourishes in a completely different space. Let's take a look through some of the more recent announcements from Soul Leave. The avalanche of information we've started to receive from Overprime started with their progress report in late August. This included interviews with the developers and some gameplay. More importantly, they showed the next phase of their plans, which included putting the game on the Steam platform, as well as confirming that the 22 heroes that they planned to start with included their own brand new hero. This is when we first got a glimpse of Adele with her shield and chainsword. After that, they streamed members of the team and the community playing the game, which gave us our first taste of what they have planned with a variety of changes which sets Overprime apart as more than just a Paragon clone. Whether that's good or bad is a matter of opinion. Shortly thereafter, we got a peek at their brick and mortar establishment provided by Soli's backer, Netmarble. From what I understand, Overprime is the only one of these games that has a central development location. It's not necessary to the development of the game, but I'm sure it's helpful for the team. The next big announcement was the game being played on the PS5 dev kit. I know many people doubt that this was actually the dev kit since they never showed what the controller was plugged into. However, they aren't allowed to show the dev kit on the video, and there are plenty of other clues in the footage that confirm console play. Next was some work on their own skins for the game, a necessary skill for them to have if they plan to monetize over Prime at all. The skins included both concept art and fully realized skins shown in game. We then got to see their work on technical art. The particle effects for Overprime were never all that bad, but this video showed significant improvements. The last major update we got was the game coming to Steam, something they promised would happen and they have now delivered on. Out of all the Paragon successors, Soul Leave seems to be the most willing to make drastic changes to the heroes and overall game mechanics. I can't say whether these changes are good or not, I just know that they'll set Overprime apart from both Fall and Predecessor. While all of the pair zombies seek to diverge from and improve upon Paragon, Fall and Predecessor are walking the same path in different ways. Overprime has chosen to forge their own way ahead. Some of what we've seen from Overprime is that all of your abilities, aside from your ultimate, will be unlocked and available from the start of the match. You still have to choose which abilities to level up and improve, but the initial decision of what to unlock first has been removed from the equation. They've also removed a tower from each lane. Instead of two towers, an inhibitor than the core, you just have a tower, inhib, then core. It's designed this way to make the game faster. You also have a portal on either side lane that allows for quick rotations across the map, this is one of the main differences that I personally don't like, but I'm willing to give it a try and see what happens. Something we've seen in the past and seems to have been carried forward is a completely different Prime Orb mechanic where defeating the Prime Guardian causes him to push down mid lane all on his own. 
or her own. I, I don't want to get myself canceled for assuming the giant battle apes gender. These changes extend to hero kits as well. From what we've seen, Kalari and Murdoch has some significant reworks. Murdoch has shoulder fired tracking rockets and an artillery fire mode. Kalari has a melee range lockdown ultimate and a shadow slip instead of a double jump. Again, I'm not sure how much I like these changes, but I think it's smart to really set themselves apart from the competition. The final thing they changed are the names of the heroes. Now, <laughs> they did not do a good job with many of them. It's something they seem to be struggling with and have conducted community polls to figure out what the new name should be. I kind of feel for them. If you ask a writer what the hardest part of crafting a story is, they will often say naming the characters. Yeah, they did an especially bad job with some of the names, but it's understandable with the language barrier. I wish they would have just given them cool Korean names or something. Uh, there, there's been much speculation as to why they changed the names, and thanks to content creator JPy, I finally found out Cell Leaves explanation. They changed the names because they plan to release a web novel with all of their own lore for the game on Netflix. As we've gone down this path of Paragon Resurrection, many people have correctly pointed out that in order for these games to succeed, they'll have to rely on their own teams to create new skins and eventually new heroes once the Paragon assets have run out. For Overprime, eventually is now with the introduction of Adele. Soul Eve isn't just creating skins for existing assets, they'll be releasing their own hero as well. We don't know what sort of ability she'll have, but it'll be fresh and interesting to see how she plays. We've seen concept art and full realizations of skins for what seems to be tier 1 palette swaps all the way to themed tier 3 full design changes. And not only for the heroes themselves, we've seen skins for the minions as well. Hell, the minions themselves have been changed from what they were in Paragon. They released this image of Destroyer, which many people think is a new hero, however I believe it's a skin for Orb Prime. Their posted Discord kinda confirmed that with the Destroyer being placed just beneath the minion skins. Having their own intellectual property to work with will be key when monetizing the game. It's a bit unethical to profit off someone else's work when selling Paragon skins, but Soul Eve won't run into that problem as they already have their own skins and a new hero that they can possibly monetize. Overprime is one of the least popular Paragon Resurrection projects out there right now, and I have no idea why. They check all the boxes for what people have said they wanted. As I've tracked these games over the years, there's a few things that people have said would affect these Paragon successors the most. Number one, will it be on console? Overprime is the only game that has proved that they will indeed be on console. Number two, can they create their own intellectual property to move forward? Overprime has done this. Number three, these games can't reasonably expect success if they're just recreating a dead game. Overprime has shown far more deviation from Paragon than any of the others. I personally believe that the first iterations of Overprime have caused people to dismiss the game offhand without realizing what's been going on with Soul Leave. This is a completely different game than what we saw a year ago. There's also a bit of tribalism involved. People have picked their own personal favorite and refused to accept that any of the others could ever possibly do anything better than their baby. I try to keep an open mind when it comes to all these projects, so while I've disliked the direction of Overprime in the past, I've never slept on the game and gave them a chance when appropriate. Maybe the speed and direction of Overprime isn't your cup of tea, and that's fine, but I think anyone in our community would be doing themselves a disservice if they didn't at least give Overprime a chance. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want more third-person MOBA content, but for now, this is the Mangu signing off. You guys, have a good one. Mangu! Shout out to channel members Foolish Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, and Ferret.